put those concepts together, create the fight, show that to the director, sometimes show that to the actor, get some feedback. Again, if we have time, we make some changes again, get the actors in, start training them, start teaching them everything, probably have some changes throughout that. Then we would do a previs. So we'd have our own cameras, we'd get all the props and as much set as we could, usually in the rehearsal space. We'd shoot it, each angle, every setup. Yeah, choreography is not that hard to create, but sometimes it's, sometimes it's tricky where there's difficulties, like I said, about putting guns in fights. That's always a pain in the ass because the moment you have a gun, then no, no, nothing makes sense. It's, it's, yeah, nothing <laughs> makes sense, especially if you've got two people starting this far apart and, and they're not allowed to shoot each other. Yeah, You're like, yeah. well, how do I get into <laughs> fighting distance and not shoot someone Yeah, in a single take? How do we choreograph the camera around the actors so that we see everything? Yeah. Um, how do we find our cut transitions because they needed to be done in specific ways i just really enjoyed being nice. able to do that and it came off really well and and people have said they they liked that bit mm -hmm. in the reviews and the, yeah. the film so i think the john wick films are always fun to watch and just just to see how far they go with things because you've got to keep up with what people are doing because yeah. you can't just put something in that's outdated that it doesn't quite work anymore but also you're also trying to think about something that hasn't been done before and or trying to take something that has been done and, and do it a different way how dangerous is this job it can be very dangerous yeah. hi i'm Andrea Rogozin and this is beyond real talk the podcast where i invite real entertainment industry professionals and ask them real questions what are they actually doing how are they doing it why are they doing it? And how can you start doing the same thing? And my today's guest is a stuntman, stunt performer, actor, uh, with over a hundred credits on IMDb. You might have seen him in such projects as Captain America, the first Avenger, Snow White and the Huntsman, Thor Dark World, Maleficent, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers Age of Ultron, Rise of the Foot Soldier, quite a few of those, I think, Mary Queen of Scots, Vikings, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, and a lot more. Dan Styles. Hello. Hi, Dan. How are you? Good, thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. It's been a while since I've seen you. We met at uh, Independent Drama. Yep. Uh, I was doing walking stage combat classes, just for beginners. Uh, and it's, it has been, what, like probably six years, <laughs> I think. I think we have worked on the short called The Riot Act as well, yeah. together. Yeah, you were coordinating the action. I was one of the stunt performers, by the way. I forgot about it. <laughs> actually, I actually did a little bit of stunts. I was, you know, I've, I've been hit by policemen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, how has it been like last six years? Wow, um, I mean, a lot. There's, there's been a lot going on. Yeah. It's, been, it's been good six years. Obviously, we've had some hiccups with COVID and strikes and <sighs> all sorts, but uh, Mm. Yeah, I can't complain. Nice. Look, we'll talk about everything. We'll talk about your nomination for Taurus Award, which is, if you don't know, Taurus Award is like an Oscar for stunt performers, right? Uh, which I think is unfair that you don't have an actual Oscar nomination. <laughs> <laughs> Not, yet. Not yet. Not yet. Because you should. You like, you are real superheroes. <laughs> if you talk about it, like all the uh, action that we see in movies, it's like it's not, you know, actual Batman. It's guys like, like you. But before we talk about all of it, I want to know how did it all begin for you? Why you decided to go into action? Why you decided to go into movies, into films? Were you like an athlete before that? Basically, just tell me your story. How it all started for you? Why films? Why action? Oh, it came from a lot of different places. I think um, as, a, as a kid, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. but I wanted to do everything. So I wanted to be a firefighter, I wanted to be an astronaut, I wanted to be uh, an athlete, I wanted to be everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mum sent us, my, my brothers and I, to um, after school classes and we did like drama classes. Mm. And I found through that I got to be everything. And I could be aliens and monsters and medieval knights and all sorts. And, and I think I really enjoyed that escapism and that play and, and, and being able to be anyone and, mm -hmm. and but still be yourself so acting kind of came first acting came first yeah mm -hmm. um through that i got some uh i got working with some professional stage companies so i, I did a lot of musical theater was it in london 
No, this is, uh, I lived up north near Liverpool. Mm -hmm. um, so I did some pantomimes, some musical theatre, stuff like that, very far from what I do now. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but that was one aspect of it. So uh, I also did drama at school. And for one of our final pieces for our like, GCSE coursework exam, we had to do a play. So a friend of mine and I, or two friends and I, wanted to do this play about three brothers who did a bank heist and it all goes wrong and they have a big fight. Yeah. So our teacher taught us some stage combat. So some, some very basic kind of punches and that's about it probably. Um, but one of my friends was a, had done karate. So he, he, between the three of us, we kind of created this fight scene mm. uh, that we performed as, as part of our play. And then I went on to do media at, um, at college. So it was, a lot of filmmaking, partly because that was one of the subjects I did really well at, at school. Um, and it, it just felt like, well, I'll just do that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was going to do drama at college, but they they dropped the course because it, it wasn't getting enough signups. So, uh, <laughs> Interesting. so it would have been media and drama, but I ended up just doing media. Um, and the, one of the guys that I did that the play with at school, he went through to the same course as me. So having done the stage combat together and, and kind of being good friends, we we used to work together on all of the projects and making up fights mm. for everything. So whatever the school project, whatever the college project was, whether it was a music video or a horror film or a crime drama or a soap opera, we were putting fight scenes into it. And then because the college had pretty good facilities, um, it had its own cameras, it had its own edit suites and stuff, we could actually hire those things uh, so we kind of gathered a few other friends and, and we'd either write our own projects or we'd just go out and just, you know, documentary film or mm -hmm. something. And we made comedy sketches. We did little short films. We did fight scenes. Um, but again, we were, we were constantly shooting stuff and, and making stuff and editing it. And very little of it actually was like completely finished <laughs> <laughs> or at least in a, in a level that we were happy to put it anywhere. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was all just practice and yeah. we were, we were doing stuff all the time. So, so that was kind of the beginning of the choreography aspect of things. Um, but I still didn't really know what I was doing. And then a friend of mine at college, because I was, I was often in a lot of the productions as well as, as the actor, because most of the people going onto the media course, they wanted to be directors and producers. And, and they were doing some short films and stuff, so so that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 But I was, I was often in front of the camera as mm -hmm. well, because I was mm -hmm. happy to. So one of my friends said, why don't you go and be an actor? I was like, oh, yeah, I hadn't, hadn't really thought of that. <laughs> that was something that people could do. So, uh, I didn't know it's a profession, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I watch movies all the time. But yeah. um, So I found this booklet about drama schools and applied to a bunch of stuff. And my dad lived in London, so I kind of had, had somewhere to go. And the people that I'd already worked with on these theatre jobs, um, they helped me with, like, doing photos and monologues and, and teaching me how how the industry worked. So I kind of knew what I was doing to go. I applied, had a couple of recalls for stuff, but didn't actually get in. Mm -hmm. But I didn't expect that. I was like, oh, I'll just apply and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually very healthy for, for actors. It's very healthy to apply and not expect anything because a lot of actors are struggling with like applying and then even like maybe having some sort of additions and then hyping up the whole level just like too high than, than being, you know, upset about everything. I, I know that by experience. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it was very upsetting, especially for like a 17 year old or 18 year old mm. what I was. So, but I was like, well, I've, I've got all the preparation already there my dad's there and I've got like everyone's taught me what to do and I already had a job or a potential job lined up because one of the guys I knew worked in a theatre in London so I was like well I'll, I'll just go yeah because the work's there and then I'll just work as an actor until until I get into drama school yeah um so I moved to my dad's got a job in a theatre front of house and doing bar work and stuff and slowly through like the stage magazine and PCR, which isn't around anymore, but I'd apply for short films and student films and fringe turret shows and, and bit by bit started to get work and, and obviously the network builds and you get recommended for stuff. Um, but I guess because of, because of my look or because of my skill set, I started to get a lot of kind of military roles or police 
people or um, thugs and that kind of... Well, welcome to my yeah. world. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I know that because like, you know, I'm kind of like big-ish guy and I speak Russian. And Russian. So <laughs> what? And I'm not actually, I actually, I'm Russian speaking Ukrainian from Latvia. It's like, it's a mess. But obviously because I speak Russian, like most of the castings that I get is like Russian bandit Ivan or evil FSB. KGB Garu or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so I know I know what you mean. Always a bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Which I don't mind to be fair. It's good to be typecast. Yeah. yeah. Um so yeah, so uh so I was often kind of having to to do that kind of work as an actor. And alongside that I found some stage combat classes, um, which were run by a company called Youngblood, which mm. don't quite exist anymore, but Tim Klotz um, exactly. I know Tim. I know Tim. I actually worked with Tim on uh, on one of the projects. Uh, it was uh, the Good Neighbor. Mm -hmm. Like there wasn't a lot of action, but I worked with him. Yeah. Right. So he he now works for ID, which is <laughs> <right>. funny, <laughs> but uh, ironic. Um, yeah. But yeah, he he was my first teacher among uh, Lewis Penfold and uh, Magnus. I can't remember his surname, but I haven't seen him for a while. Um, and and that group uh, through Youngblood kind of took me through my training. Um, I should jump backwards because uh, just before I left Liverpool, um, I went to see a, a reenactment show just as just for fun with my family. Mm. And I was like, like, like history. Yeah, like, like, uh, it was Vikings, I think. And I was like, Oh, my God, you get to play with swords mm -hmm. and, and do real battles. And, <laughs> and you can actually do it for real. And, and I went and chatted to them. I was like, how do, how do you get to do this? And they, yeah. they gave me some numbers. So I wrote to some companies in, in London that did reenactment and one of them got back to me and they were a Viking reenactment group. So I went over to them and, and joined them. And it was kind of maybe not weekly, but, but I tried to go as much as I could. So a few times a month. And then every so often, particularly in the summer, they do shows at all the like English heritage and, and castles and sites around the country. And I forget how many shows I did, but quite a lot. And they train you. So at the weekends we, we did sword fighting and, and because I was doing stage combat fairly yeah. similar time to this and I'd done fencing before as well, I was fairly quite good mm -hmm. at doing the sword work. Um, although when you start out, you're not allowed to use the sword. You have to use a spear, yeah. which, which is, not as fun. Um, <laughs> you can but, still damage someone with a spear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you can, but they're like, oh, only the, the commoners only have the spears, so you're not allowed yeah, the sword yeah. until you yeah. until you look like you could afford a sword. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're very much on authenticity, so yeah. you had to buy your, all your own kit, and a lot oh. of people make all their own kit. And that yeah. that side, I wasn't really interested. Mm. I just I just wanted to play with swords. <laughs> um, but yeah, the training was really cool. Um, so I was doing that alongside stage combat so so that that went quite well because because i was quite comfortable with that and i'd done a lot before got through all the badc the british academy of dramatic mm -hmm. combat exams in about a year um and then kind of didn't really have anywhere else to go because that that's kind of the top limit of, of way what you can do with it um but a few of us who were all doing that level around the same time uh were like well let's get together and let's try and find our own work. So we found like uh, Ruth and Rachel, who then went on to make Arsiani. Uh, they they found a lot of like open mic sessions and and uh, festivals and things. And we got involved with some short films as, as a team. Um, so they would coordinate, and the rest of us would be former would be performers, or I'd coordinate, and the others would be performers. Um, and so we were we were kind of working doing fight performance and, and again my acting jobs were hiring me often because they needed someone to do a fight scene and, and I could already do it and then I would choreograph for it but at the time it was still I just wanted to be an actor and this was just skills that I was having fun with but mm -hmm. there were skills that were helping me do yeah, that yeah, yeah. Um, and whenever someone said oh could you come in and teach a class or could you come and choreograph for something you're not in I'd be like oh no 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 I'll, I'll get someone else who, who's much better than me and can, can do it for me. And sometimes I'd go with them and assist. So, so they'd kind of give me some, some, uh, some training. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't really think I was interested in that. And then after a while, someone was saying, well, why are you not doing it? Cause you're getting offered all this stuff and you've done a lot of it already. Mm -hmm. And I kind of worked out 
how much choreography I'd done just for the stuff that I was involved with and how many times I'd turned stuff down or given it, passed it on to mm. someone else. And it was quite a lot. I was like, oh, well, maybe there's a career there <laughs> that I haven't really thought of. <laughs> and the acting, as you know, is a, very competitive and not yeah. very easy to get jobs. And so I started to write to people and I'd find out, again, using the stage and PCR and, and IMDb and just finding out what was coming up. And then I'd write to the director or the producer and it might just be a student film or an indie film. And I'd say, do you, do you need a fight coordinator? And often they hadn't even thought about it because it's it's very low budget. Yeah. And they were like, oh yeah, if you don't mind. So, you know, as an actor, you write a hundred letters, you might get one reply, you might get one audition. Mm -hmm. Whereas I was writing like 10 letters and getting almost every job. Mm -hmm. So that went quite far quite quickly. Yeah. Um, and then I just happened to get lucky a couple of those. Uh, one of them, the producer, Emma Biggings, and there was another one who were the production managers, I think, uh, Nancy Brassoles and um, Chantel Rochester. Uh, they went on to do other productions that were then a higher budget and, mm -hmm. and had a bit more money behind it. And they got back to me because I'd done their low budget. And, and then that introduced me to other people and other producers. And, and that was kind of where it all started from those yeah, two. Yeah those two jobs, which which were very small jobs to start with. But, you know, you, you get lucky with one of those and people move on and they take you with them. And yeah. then through them, I've met all the other producers that I've worked with and that I still work with today. Mm. Um, I can trace those back to yeah. to those connections. So. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I've heard, I've heard like a lot of people are saying about it, like saying things like that, like when you start, uh, you never know who you will meet, like on, on the very small job, like student job or whatever, like you can find someone who you will work later, like, and, and you, you should, uh, you should definitely consider it. And one of my friends, uh, Matt, uh, Matt Knowles, uh, Magic K, who I actually had in my podcast as well, he said like one of his, I think his uncle told him, uh, one of the rules of his life, like that he tries to follow in his life, like don't never turn even a free job if it if you can afford it and if it doesn't damage your career because mm -hmm. you never know who you will meet which again like sometimes you feel like well f there is some people are really exploiting actors with free jobs a lot <laughs> so maybe sometimes you need to think about like you know what pay me something it's, it's a job but you still you still have to consider like what maybe you will meet someone so yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's, it's pretty cool. And uh, then what happened? How did you come? Like, how did you come to um, uh, independent drama? About this time that I decided to to take on teaching and choreographing, mm -hmm. I uh, I also joined up to the BADC's teacher training um, course, which is a two year apprenticeship where you work under another teacher. Uh, well, all, all the other teachers and you, you learn their syllabus and how to teach all the different weapon systems, but you also do other work and you have to do coursework and you learn about historical periods, you learn like samurai and Greeks and mm. Romans and everything that, that could be, could be uh, created in, in choreography. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you know all the context behind everything. Through that, I, I became the teacher. Uh, and what in the period that is kind of the probationary period where you've you've done your two years, but you're you have to tick a few boxes before you're considered a full teacher. And I had to put a, a group of students through a test, basically. And I did a job, uh, a theatre job, um, with a, a company who was doing Beowulf, mm -hmm. and the fight director on that job was Ronin Trainer, mm -hmm. and we met up and and. He, we, there was lots of fights in Beowulf, so he was looking for people that could do stuff and I could do stuff, so I got quite a bit to do in that. Um, and we got chatting and he had also just been through a teacher training process with the BASSC, mm -hmm. which is the British Academy of Stage and Screen Combat, which is essentially the same thing, um, but just two different groups. Mm -hmm. So Ronan had, um, had independent drama as this company that he'd set up, I think a few years ago, or, or even that year to do acting workshops because he just wanted to have something going mm -hmm. for actors. Um, and we got chatting and, and I was like, oh, I need to, I was telling him that I need to put these students through and he had to as well. So we decided to use ID to create the Stage Combat Company. Mm -hmm. So we basically joined forces um, with the intention of running both academies at the same time. Um, we realized that just in terms of what the requirements were for both, 
it was very difficult to do them both in the same course, which mm -hmm. is unfortunate, but we, we went ahead and did both courses anyway, um, which maybe in the long run has worked out in our favor because people can choose. Mm. Uh, so that's, that's how we started ID. And then Ronan and I often worked together as coordinators. So again, we did these projects like with, with the group before where we gather a team like yourself um, and when, when, whenever we got on a project that required more people, we just brought everyone in mm -hmm. and, and we created the fights. Yeah, um, yeah, I, because I remember I actually auditioned for your, uh, basically, for, for performers that you use for for some action. And I think, it, well, again, it was like probably five, six years ago. <laughs> and I think, I think I even kind of got in at that point because I received an email from, from, from uh, ID that like we would like to use it when, when we can. But then at that point, I was I felt like I was kind of not really that interested. I was like I, I had a you know, full time job and I was trying to pursue acting as well. And I thought like, you know what? No, maybe maybe action is not for me uh, at that point. It's how, how, how many years has it been for you with, with the ID? I think ID turns 17 this year. Oh, wow. Or last year, sorry. Yeah, nice. The last thing I did with ID, I think last year I did um, firearms. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. It was a good course. And again, like it's it's cheaper than some of the like, because there, there are some very expensive options in, in UK. Uh, I think bare arms or something, something mm -hmm. like that, but it's still like the skill is the same. And I think uh, it's, it's a very good course. So this is basically, well, part of your career. What was the very first action job that you remember that like you think was a success? Hmm, good question. I think the, the one I remember most that I, I have fond memories of is, is The Hunt for Gollum, mm -hmm. which was a Lord of the Rings fan film. Um, which was the first of its kind, at mm. least the level that it achieved. This fan film by uh, Chris Bouchard, who I think wrote it as well, or might have co-wrote it, um, he was directing. And because it was, it was one of the first ones to kind of make a fan film about Lord of the Rings, uh, he got quite a lot of uh, help, like mm. a lot of people who, who were doing fairly well in their careers wanted to help. So everyone was offering freebies and you know we had great prosthetics we had great mm. art department chris was from a vfx background so he did a lot of the vfx which turned out really well in the in the movie we were the fight team ruth and uh, rachel were the fight coordinators but i forget if they got the job first and brought us in but anyway i think we all kind of because it, it went out around the the circles i think we all heard about it around the same time yeah. uh, and i got cast as one of the the kind of lead orcs so i actually had a speaking role as an orc as mm. well so me and a guy called josh um we had our head cast it was just such a fun experience like we because we weren't i mean we weren't getting paid for it but i think because of that you kind of just put everything and, and it was something we wanted to do and we loved doing yeah. so we put loads of time in just creating concepts for the fights and I remember we did a whole session with just me and Josh doing arrow hits and like playing different ways of taking arrow hits and mm. then we created the fight scenes um, and this fight this the main fight basically with with uh, Aragorn was the main character and and we came in waves so I we played the first wave and then we'd swap costumes and then we'd play the second wave and they'd have a bunch of dead bodies on the floor as the first yeah. wave so we actually got to do lots yeah and then yeah. there was another fight with a different character and we we got to be in that one as well mm. so we had lots of different costumes and lots of head makeup and stuff um, but my main character I had to have my my head cast so I had a full prosthetic mm. um, that was a really fun experience is it fun though? Because I've heard like when, when you have such prosthetics, like it takes so much time to actually apply them every day. Like yeah, it did. Yeah. And but we we actually because we shot it in Epping Forest, and they got permission for us to camp out. Mm -hmm. So we all took this is very low budget filmmaking, mm -hmm. but we all took tents along. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and camped out in Epping Forest. Nice. And then we get up at like six in the morning. And me and the, the main orcs would just sit in the in this gazebo and, and have our mm -hmm. faces and arms painted. I think it was maybe about three hours for the whole thing. Oh. So, yeah, it was That's an early morning, yeah. but we were camping anyway, so it's not like yeah, you're going to yeah, yeah. lie in. Um, but yeah, it was good. It was such a great team and such a... 
Yeah, can you watch it somewhere? Is yeah, it's on online, YouTube? so they can't sell it. So mm -hmm. it, it's online on YouTube. Um, yeah. The Hunt for Gollum. Yeah. Uh, I think it's had like a ridiculous number of reviews it's in the millions, mm. maybe even double figure millions. Yeah, yeah, you um, can find the link in the description. Nice, nice. Okay, uh, so that was like one of the, the first that you remember. Yeah, we did other smaller things. And obviously as, as an actor, Prior to that, I'd done action roles, but that was that was the kind of the first like stunt team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you yeah. were like a, uh, that one. You were more like a stunt performer, right? Than I was stunt both because because oh. I was as opposed to uh, a stunt coordinator. Yeah, no, I I didn't. I mean, we helped out. We all kind of pitched in with mm -hmm. choreography, but but uh, Ruth and Rachel were the fight coordinators. Yeah, and and yeah, I was actor stunt performer. Yeah, uh, and when did you start to coordinate? Well, I mean, like, I guess you coordinate like smaller things very early in your career. Yeah. But like, when, when did you get to coordinate something in, in a bigger project? Uh, I think it was around 2011 mm -hmm. that I did the two projects or one, it might have been one year and then the next year, but the two projects that I mentioned with these, these producers, um, one was called Tooting Broadway or Gangs of Tooting Broadway. I think that was 2011, um, which was a lot of kind of gang fights and, and stuff like that. Um, and then there was another one called The Harsh Light of Day, which was a vampire film. And actually, I I could only do half of that because um, a clash came up with, with my time, but they were still happy for me to do half and they mm. had someone else who came in for the other bit. But through that, I, I met, as I said, um, Emma Biggings um, and one of the actors in that was uh, Giles Alderson, mm -hmm. who went on to make the Filmmakers Podcast. He is the, mm. the main host of the Filmmakers nice. Podcast. So yeah, so they were, they were the two that I remember being, again, I'd done other things in student films and small things around mm. that, but they were the two that felt like mm -hmm. a real production. Yeah. That, yeah. Well, can you explain to people who don't know, and as I say on this podcast all the time, I know everything, but for people who don't know, <laughs> what it means to design an action scene. How do you do it? Do you, do you specialize mostly on fight scenes or you do other stuff as well? I do other stuff now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, my specialism, I, I would say, is fights. Mm -hmm. um, but since in the last 10 years, I've, I've had to diversify because mm -hmm. people want more. And like, how, how do you design a fight? So I would start, obviously, with the script, looking at how it's written. Some, mm -hmm. some writers will write it blow by blow and some writers will just write they fight would like prefer? Shakespeare uh, somewhere in between I like to know the beats that they want to achieve whether there's whether they're acting beats or camera beats or or, or just story beats so mm -hmm. you know who's winning who's losing if there's anything that they want to suggest if there's any story points that might refer to later or prior that need to be there um, and also it sometimes gives you an idea especially if the director's written it or if the director's had a hand in writing, that it gives you an idea of what they what their style is, whether they're hyper violent or whether they're whether it's kind of tame or whether it's martial arty or whether it's quite quick and efficient. Mm -hmm. um, and then you start to get a feel for the characters. Obviously, I, I read the whole script so I understand how they've got to that point, where that continues, who the characters are, what their backgrounds are, mm -hmm. um, and and I guess my benefit having had the acting experience is that you approach it much like an actor mm. looking at a character and deciding who they are and what how they move and and what their thought process is and you know what going into a fight what is their objective what is their what are their um conflicts how are they how are they what are they using and what resources do they have to use to get through that obstruction yeah um so so that approach was was how i used to work and how i still work today mm. Um, and then through conversation through the script, and if there wasn't that information in the script, conversations with the director, uh, you find out you know how, all of those things, what they want to see. Sometimes you get to talk to the actors early on if if they've already been cast, what how they move, what their mm -hmm. what their background is as a as an actor, just to figure um, out what they're capable of, right? Yeah. So if they've had martial arts background, maybe they've done dance before, mm -hmm. maybe break dancing or something. So. I can find a language that they understand. So I will talk differently to someone who's done martial arts than I would to someone who's done 
dancing. Mm -hmm. But dancing, um, like uh, I've heard that it's very also kind of beneficial to do some action because you do understand the rhythm of you know, just yeah. a rhythm. Yeah. yeah. And, and just picking up choreography. Dancers mm -hmm. are very, very good at yeah. learning choreography because that's what they've done their entire yeah. life. So you can show them 10 moves and they'll be like, but, 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 mm -hmm. okay, done. Mm -hmm. And yeah, rhythm's really good. Um, sometimes you need to push dancers a little bit more on, on the aggression of things mm -hmm. and, and actually showing violence and because their moves tend to flow or they're all they're you know very rhythmic um, and you want to dirty it a little bit more yeah, yeah, yeah. but often that's favorable to someone who's never done anything that, that you need to both get them up to that level and to to keep it safe and, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. make them choreograph um, there are actors that are very kind of naturally quite aggressive and you know they've done they've done aggressive roles before and they know how to throw a punch but they don't necessarily know how to be safe yeah. as soon as you start teaching them the safety they pull back twice as far so you're then having to push the aggression but mm -hmm. maintain the safety which is yeah. always a, a balance once I've got that depending on the time ideally I'd, I'd just have a play day with concepts so I'd, I'd get a few guys together and just just play with different ideas. So if, mm. if it was a gun production, we we do lots of disarms or mm. working out how you can how you can create a fight from, with a gun in play because that's uh, always but tricky. Do you work first like when you design a fight already like or start starting designing like, and playing around with moves? Do you work first with the stunt yep. before you go to actors? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If if possible, if the actors are capable, very yeah. capable, and. Um, and obviously back back when I was doing much lower budget stuff, you didn't have much of a stunt team. You had the actors and that was it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But now it's better to come up with stuff with the stunt team because you can play stuff, play with stuff. You can change things. If you start doing something with an actor and then changing it and then changing it again, then they start getting confused. And yeah. when you get to the final day, it's, it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, it also helps that you can create stuff within your environment without as, as much as you want to hear the actor actor's input, you don't want too much input because it starts to throw things in and you know you, you get v blurry visions and, and I'm always trying to create what the director wants. Yeah. And the actor might not always be on the same page as mm -hmm. the director. So it's easier if you show them something and then and they say, they that's what we're doing. Now shut up and do your job. <laughs> well, I, I enjoy when the when the actors want to change stuff or when the actors have questions about things. Mm -hmm. So I'll show them it and they'll start to practice and they're like, "Oh, this doesn't feel right." And then we'll work out: is it because they're, they're is it because they're set. yeah because they're not doing it right or because it just doesn't feel natural to them or is it because because that's not how their body moves or that's mm -hmm. not how they 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 they've they thought about how they would deal with that situation. Yeah. And then I'm more than happy if they say, oh, I think I'd do this to go. Yeah. If that makes sense to mm. the fight and that makes sense in the narrative, then yeah. then yeah, let's do that instead. And I'd rather just say yes straight away than have a big argument about, oh, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? Because then we can move on. Yeah. So create the concepts. Maybe if we can show the director and they can say which ones they like, which ones they don't like, then start. So, to so you them. film it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put those concepts together, create the fight, show that to the director, sometimes show that to the actor, get some feedback. Again, if we have time, we make some changes again, get the actors in, start training them, start teaching them everything, probably have some changes throughout that, uh, get that to the director again for some more feedback. Once it's kind of in a, in a, a place where it's set, at least to, to as far as it, it, we think it's gonna go, then we would do a previs, so that would be the stunt team's version of how you would shoot the fight. So we'd have our own cameras, we'd get all the props and as much set as we could, usually in a rehearsal space. Mm. We'd shoot it, each angle, every setup, edit it, it together, put in the sound, put in the VFX if possible, um, and then giving that to the director as, as a reference that they can choose to use or not. Mm. Some directors will want to do it their own way and they'll their, them and their DP will have a certain style or they'll have a way of shooting it that, that they want to do. Mm. And sometimes they'll see the previews and that'll be our storyboard essentially. Yeah. So we will go, okay, we do shot one, then we do shot two, then we do shot three. Mm -hmm. And that's that's generally a much more efficient way of doing it because it's quicker on the day. You don't have to go, oh, where are we going to put the camera? What, what are we going to shoot first? Let's do a master, which you're never going to use mm -hmm. a master of an entire fight. But so many people still want to yeah. do the safe master 
because that's how you shoot everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why why would they want to do it their own way? Because they that's that's what you would do with everything. You know, if from all the way through the shoot, the director would turn up and the DOP and they've probably had their conversations separate to, to our yeah. department and they've decided how they're going to shoot everything. They've decided what they're going to shoot. Mm -hmm. And with fights, I think in the East, there's a certainly a different culture for that, that the fight coordinator is, is highly regarded as someone who has kind of knows what they're doing. And yeah. it's a very different discipline to, to shoot a fight or action. And yeah. they will just hand over. And there's no ego and there's no issue with it. Yeah. Over here, it's different. And I, it's not always an ego thing. I think sometimes it's just a naivety that mm -hmm. you shoot action the same way as you shoot everything else. But no, because it's like for me, it says like, I understand that you might uh, like a director and DOP, they can work out the style, how they want to shoot the whole film. I understand that. But at the same time, fight and action, it's so very technical that you really need to hit the marks. You really need to kind of like have some particular angles. Otherwise it will not work. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. why would you shoot yourself in the foot? <laughs> I don't know. I think some of it is, is ego. Some of it is, is just not knowing mm -hmm. what you don't know. Yeah. Um, some of it is thinking that you can get away with it, that you can, you know, they can turn up on the day and I can turn up on the day and they'll put the camera down and, and look at me and say, is that, is that going to work? And I'll mm -hmm. go yes or no. And then they'll do the next shot and the next shot. But if, if there's time and there's, you have got a previous available, you don't need to work out where the camera's going to go because it's already dictated. And if, if the previous works, obviously yeah. if, if there's things in it that, that need tweaking, then you've got to change it. But if it works, then that is your storyboard. That's your blueprint. But when you're doing previous, you do, you definitely need to know in advance where you're shooting, right? The, like the space where you're shooting, what kind of like how much room you have and what ideally you're yeah. around and yeah. stuff like tables or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and that can catch you out. Even if you've done a recce um, where you've gone to the location, you've seen all this, that can catch you out because maybe art department has built something that you weren't mm -hmm. expecting, or it's bigger or smaller than than it was going to be. Or you know maybe it's it's rained and something's changed, or maybe the the wind has destroyed something, or or maybe there's some lighting that mm. uh, has affected the space. So you've got a really dark corner that you can't see anything. Or um, yeah, you know, there's always little changes, but usually that doesn't change the previous too much. I think I think filmmakers prefer the safety of having coverage mm -hmm. because again that's what you do with a lot of other things. If you've got all those angles. Then you can choose how to edit it later. Yeah, and you can kind of you you don't have to rely on setting yourself to a to a structure in in prep. Mm -hmm. You can you can get to get to post and go. Well, I've got all these shots, all these coverage. Now I can choose how I want to put it together, and I can change my mind mm -hmm. later. Or if something's not right, I can fix it because I've got other options. Whereas when you're if you're following a previous, unless you've got a second camera you are kind of restricted to that. So if there is a continuity error or if something's yeah. something's gone wrong, you only have those shots. Yeah. So I do get that it ties you a bit, but you, as I said, you can have a backup by having a second camera so you can cut away to a close up or you can cut away to a, mm -hmm. a different version of that shot if yeah. you need to. Because, yeah, it's because I understand like with previous, there is no wiggle room. Like you just do exactly shot by shot what you created. Yeah. All right, yeah. But it just it just helps the actors because mm -hmm. when you're doing a master the whole thing in a master and you might do a few takes of that and then you yeah. do the whole thing from this side and the whole thing from this side everyone's getting tired of course yeah because it's like it's very physical yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and it is still a stunt so every yeah. every time you do it the risk of injury or the yeah. risk of, of, of even someone just just having a twisted mm -hmm. you know sore muscle or something is going to increase every time you do it. Yeah. So the less you do it, the more you're going to get out of it, the more the actor's energy is going to be high and, and their willingness and, yeah. and ability is going to be higher as well. Uh, but if, if we're talking just about uh, just a fight scene, like what kind of safety measures are there? So the main thing is, is that you're never or very rarely making contact with anyone. So especially with hits to the face, there would be a distance gap. Mm -hmm. Now that, I wouldn't say there's a strict rule per se, like you might be this close sometimes, mm -hmm. you might be this close sometimes. It, it really depends where the camera is and how good the performers are. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you can make contact, 
um, but then that contact is reduced by you might have padded uh, padded f like if you I, I know a lot of Eastern films you do kicks to the head, so you might pad the shoes. Yeah. I know Jackie Chan used to have padded trainers that he used to be able to kick people with. Um, but also the ability of the stunt performer is very high and they also do competitive fighting so they're used to getting kicked in the head yeah. whereas you couldn't do that with an actor. Others that you, you can obviously wear body padding so if you're taking a fall or if you're getting hit somewhere or stabbed or anything where there's a risk of getting injured uh, you can wear body pads and there's lots of different types of pads from BMX stuff or, or motocross or ice skating or snowboarding um, lots of different varieties of padding that you can you can wear all around your body um, and then just the process the film process as opposed to theatre that because you are breaking things up you're not giving them you're not making them do an entire fight yeah. in one go unless you're trying to get a master shot mm -hmm. um, or doing a one-off um, but then you reduce the risk of things going wrong because you're only maybe shooting five moves or six yeah. to eight moves um, so there's less chance of them having to, you know, having to think of everything all yeah. at once. And, and they're also having to think about hitting their marks and da, da, da. So you're trying to reduce anything that creates more complications. Yeah. Um, sometimes you have to, you have all that stuff mm -hmm. and you just try and keep it as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. But then you might only do two shot, two moves or three moves if you might have to put, you know, a big stair fall or something in it then you wouldn't want to do 10 moves and then a stair fall. Yeah, 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 of course. Or the other way around, you certainly wouldn't want to do a stair fall and then 10 moves, because if one of those 10 moves goes wrong, <laughs> you've then got to do the stair fall again. Um, yeah. Right. So, yeah. What, what is the longest uh, fight scene that you ever did? Uh, the longest one is probably Avengement, because I, yeah. I don't think that has any records for being the longest, but it's mm -hmm. certainly, what is it, it's like four and a half minutes, I think. Like, uh, like the actual final cut of the fight yeah. it was fight well, yeah, the, I think so yeah uh, how, how long how long did it take you to, to uh, design that was it? to design over a week um because we were doing the whole film so I'd we'd spend I think we'd do a few days on it and then we'd take a break and do some other bits and then we came back to it and we had a few drafts of that one so I'd say maybe a week and a half mm -hmm. which is actually I, I would think it would would take longer to be fair because such a long fight sometimes choreography is quite quick yeah to do it might not always be perfect and yeah. then you go back and you realize oh we've done that same move twice because oh, right, yeah, yeah. we did it on two different days and mm -hmm. we weren't thinking and then you go back but as long as you yeah choreography is not that hard to create but sometimes it's sometimes it's tricky where there's difficulties like i said about putting guns in fights that's always a pain in the ass because the moment you have a gun then no, so, nothing makes sense it, it, yeah nothing makes sense especially if you've got two people starting this far apart and and they're not allowed to shoot each other yeah, like, yeah. Well, how do i get into <laughs> fighting distance and not shoot someone yeah, yeah um yeah. or there's other constraints you know someone's got a broken leg or mm -hmm. or certain beats that they have to meet but it doesn't quite make sense with mm -hmm. with how they're getting there um they can take a little bit longer because you need to sleep on it sometimes and yeah, kind of yeah, come yeah. up with a draft and then go away and think about it. Uh, but yeah, choreography doesn't take that long. All right. Um, and so, so uh, and how long? Well, I guess it also depends on the skills of the people you work with and the skills of the people who will be actually in the in the film. Because this yeah. one is with Scott Atkins, yeah. right? Yeah, who is a legend in, in the action world, right? Yeah. Um, and how long did it take you to, to film it? So I think because this changed a few times, I think we got three days in the end. Um, but originally it was scheduled for, I think it was scheduled for two days. Mm. And Scott and I and uh, and the other choreographer, uh, Luke LaFontaine, we, we kind of pushed for that schedule to be changed because we mm. were like, I don't think we're going to get it all. Yeah. And, and we argued and argued and, and eventually mainly through Scott <laughs> being yeah. able to pull his weight a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we got them to change the schedule. So mm -hmm. I think we got three days. Might have even been three and a half because I think they we overlapped a little bit with something else. Mm -hmm. um, but that was right. that was very tight. And we, we did cut a lot of the original yeah. uh, plan. So you like you had to kind of like to meet the deadline and you, you knew you wouldn't be able to to 
put everything in. Yeah. 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 And still four and a half minutes, four, four minutes something. Yeah. 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 All right. But that's really, that really is because Scott can do it. Yeah. And, you know, rarely did we do more than two takes. Mm -hmm. like sometimes three if there's a if it's a tricky bit or if, mm -hmm. if it's a tricky angle but yeah you, you don't really want to be doing more than three takes with with a group that can do it yeah, yeah when you've got actor versus actor or when you've got multiple people involved and that or there's lots of different aspects like there might be special effects or mm -hmm. things that can go wrong mm -hmm. then you then it takes a lot longer yeah um put especially as well if you've got to stop for the things that catch you out is when you've got to stop to add things so if you've got lots of blood yeah. change continuity so we're constantly having to stop add this blood stop add this blood um or where costume gets damaged you've got to keep stopping to re rechange everything and then when you've got prosthetics and special effects and things it takes even longer and armory as well because mm -hmm. um, you, you might be swapping guns or you might be putting blanks in them at one stage and taking them out and having rubber guns and then real guns and mm -hmm. yeah so You've got, to, you've got to factor in how many other things are going to affect it rather than just the time it takes to shoot that choreography. Is that the, your, your favorite project that you worked on? Uh, that, was, that was good fun. I think, I think it was more in hindsight that I enjoyed it than the, the shoot itself mm. was very stressful because right. it was very tight. And, and also because it was, it was the first time I was working as a choreographer for Scott. Um, Prior to that, I'd worked with Scott a few times, but he'd had other other coordinators, other choreographers. So mm -hmm. I understood that this was putting a lot of trust into me, but also I had a lot to offer to kind of well to live up to. I had, yeah. I had a lot of pressure yeah. to do yeah. it, and the director was an action director, so Jesse wasn't um, you know didn't apply pressure, but certainly expected mm. high high. Quality. All right, and so, so do, do you think you lived lived up to expectations? I think so. Yeah, I hope so. No, <laughs> but no. everyone's happy because because <laughs> we got nominated. But uh, and and the film in general got a lot of praise critically, mm -hmm. and and audiences love it. And I still see people talking about it now. Um, so yeah, there's occasionally someone will mention it that that was one of their favorite films that Scott did, or that was a great action movie. So mm -hmm. it's nice that it's one of those films that. Yeah. keeps coming up so mm. yeah very proud of that nice nice being nominated for for tourist award does it open more doors for a stunt performer or start a stunt coordinator it can do i think um per, i mean i wasn't personally nominated because mm -hmm. when uh when it's best fight it's only the performers that mm -hmm. are nominated in that category so so all the people that are involved in the fight had the nomination so technically i wasn't nominated mm -hmm. but it, it was my fight yeah i know people were aware of it and since doing it there are some productions that have have kind of mentioned that they know it and and that it was nominated i think partly because it was was it 2018 or 19 that it came out um It, it, it then had that COVID period that, that mm -hmm. nothing happened. So mm -hmm. it kind of maybe lost a bit of momentum. I know, um, I think it was 2018 when, uh, when we shot it. So I think it was 2019 when it came out. So it was, it was around the COVID time. Mm -hmm. So I certainly think, because I was going to go to LA to actually go to the tourist awards in person, um, which I hoped might, you know, do some networking. Mm. But that was cancelled because of COVID. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, maybe it would have been different if it wasn't for COVID. I don't know. But yeah, COVID, COVID ruined a lot of plans for a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still kind of not back to my, you know, previous self. <laughs> I think it, it it ruined my social life a lot, and just in general, like it's just just. I think the world changed a lot mm. right? after COVID. So. Yeah. Uh, but what would be your uh, favorite project that you worked on? I think after that would be One Shot, mm -hmm. um, which was also a Scott film. It was uh, a military film and it was created to be an entire one shot. It wasn't a real one shot mm -hmm. movie, but it was edited with yeah, seamless yeah, cuts. Yeah. Nice. So it comes out as a one. -er. That was one of the first jobs after COVID. 
um, after the, kind of the second lockdown. And uh, so it was, it was one of those jobs that was just nice to be working again. Mm-hmm. Um, but we had the location that we were shooting on, we had access to it and we were basically based there um, prior to shoot. So we could, we could walk from our production base onto the set and just mm-hmm. go, okay, what we're going to do here, what we're going to do there. And creatively, I think they just gave me a lot of scope to do, to do what we wanted. Yeah. Um, and it was one of those cases where it wasn't overly written on what was happening. And p- particularly because the, it wasn't written to the location. It was a little bit, but you know, we, we hadn't quite decided exactly where things were. So when myself, the director, the DP producers, um, turned up at the set, we could then walk through and go, okay, so this is going to happen here. And then how do we get from A to B in a single take? How do we c- choreograph the camera around the actors so that we see everything? Yeah. How do we find our cut transitions? Because they needed to be done in specific ways and and some places weren't wouldn't allow for, mm. for those transitions to be without being too forced. And uh, we basically shot like a previs of the entire movie, what well, the director did. So he took a film, took a, a, a camera to set with the DP and with a few of us acting as, as cast and extras, we basically ran through the script throughout the whole set. Uh, and when he edited that together, he realized it was, it was quite short. Mm. So it wasn't like the page count of the script because yeah. some action take, t- doesn't take as long. Yeah. Um, so uh, and this was only a few days before we were going to start shooting. <laughs> and he said, Dan, we need more action. <laughs> so we take some of these action beats or, or have a think about what's yeah. in the script already. And where can we add stuff that will that will elongate that without it being just mindless padding? Yeah, it has to make yeah, sense. But uh, but how do we make these these action sequences bigger? And he was busy and everyone else was busy so it was just me and a few other stunt guys that were there could go onto the set and go oh, okay so how what do we add here so mm-hmm. we we added the uh, the gatehouse sequence where so a group of guys have just jumped out of this they've just assaulted this military base they've jumped out of this truck they're killing all the the guards um and then there's a section where they break off to go into the gatehouse to open the gates to allow for more people to come in. Mm. And then they come out of the gatehouse and then there's a bit more of a firefight and then they go back to the truck and then we kind of go back to what was in the script. And then there's another breakout where we go with the, the we, we transition from the bad guys to the actors and the actors have something. Mm. And then we transition back to the bad guys. Mm-hmm. And, and that was a whole new section that we added. I just really enjoyed being nice. able to do yeah. that. And it came off really well and, and, People have said they, they liked that bit mm-hmm. in the reviews and the, the nice. film. So it sounds, it sounds very interesting. I, like uh, yeah, I've never I've never been a part of like one shot project because I, I think it's it's very interesting. I spoke to uh, my friend Anya uh, Anya Rose Daly and she was in um, Boiling Point, which mm-hmm. was like oh a yeah, full, full, yeah like, I know that's one shot. Yeah, and uh, she she told me that actually they they shot it four times. Yeah. So they have they have like that they're like there's somewhere there are like three versions of this film that I've never ever seen apart from maybe the director. <laughs> yeah. And they did a true one take. Yeah. So yeah. that was that was all the way. Yeah. Yeah. I know the production team, I've worked with them. Mm. But yeah. That was yeah. I saw that film, it was really, really good. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I know, I know. Like yeah, I had Anya on the podcast as well and we too, we spoke about it. like it was yeah, it was cool. Uh all right. Uh so do, do you did you think about writing or directing? Yes. Yeah. Um, so back at college, I was writing or co-writing with with my friends a lot. So I already did that. Um, directing, we were kind of sharing, but I kind mm-hmm. of, you know, we were directing each other. Yeah. Um, and then in those years of being a struggling actor and trying to get work off the ground, I kind of set up a group where the idea was to be a collaborative group, but I was mostly the driving force um, where I'd write short films and then I had a DOP and, and actors and a team that came to, to just shoot it. Um, I didn't direct any of those because I, I wanted to be in them. The purpose mm-hmm. was that I was the actor. So I, I always got in a, a, another director, um, but I did write them and I did kind of produce them. So I had a hand in the mm-hmm. creative uh 
vision of it. Yeah. Uh, also on my theatre work, uh, I I became quite good friends with the producer of some of the shows that I was doing, and I worked with him as an assistant director. And because that was theatre, you actually direct uh, an assistant director does more of directing than in film. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd take actors off to the side and we'd, we'd rehearse scenes and we'd block stuff and I'd do accent coaching with stuff with some of them and and we'd, we'd kind of sometimes we'd block scenes from scratch um, and then there were some shows where he did he repeated the same shows every year that I would go and block the show mm. for the start to start with while he was somewhere else and then he'd come to our show after a week of once it was kind of on its feet and then he'd just make tweaks yeah. from what I'd already set. So in terms of directing, I've done quite a bit. A few years ago, and I think it was it was actually after the, um, the Taurus nomination that a producer said to me, would I like to direct? Mm-hmm. And it was it was around, you know, similar time to John Wick and Atomic Blonde and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was quite in for stunt coordinators to, yeah. to move into directing. And I said, yes, I had actually. Um, and he he offered me a script to direct and I read through it and it it wasn't for me at the time and I felt like because I hadn't directed a huge anything big I just wanted to do something a bit smaller I Mm -hmm. wanted to set up a short film or something that I could do and then obviously because because I'm working and I'm doing other things and a child and everything else it's it's quite hard to set up a a short film when you got no money to, to put into it yourself yeah so I asked around a few producers but they were like unless you've got money or unless you've you've kind of got you know, a team together already, it's very hard to just pick something up like that. Mm. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll see what happens. And I met, I put out a few feelers. So a friend of mine who'd recently made a feature film, a very, very low budget feature film a few years ago that someone he was working with wrote and produced, and he helped produce. Uh, he wanted to put together a short film that he had written mm. with another actor and uh, they were both actors, and that would be something for them to promote themselves as actors. Yeah. And would I like to direct? And it had action in it. My friend had the script. He had two actors, him and his his friend. Um, he was going to put in his own money because mm-hmm. he was going to get something out of it, and he just wanted me to direct. So I was like, absolutely yes. And this was just when the strikes were on, mm-hmm. um, so we had like six months of no work. So. It was like a great time. Yeah. Um, and again, fortunately, a lot of the crew didn't have a lot of work going on. Although there were a few people, a few departments that we really struggled to get because they were working in commercials. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had lots of people I could call on because because I worked in different yeah. ways. So uh, so got in touch with a bunch of people. They said yes. We got everything together. We got. I did some casting. Some people we already knew, and then we reached out to a few others. Um, we created the fight, we, we previsited it, we did everything ready. We had our locations, which were great. And then a week before we were about to shoot, the main actor, not my friend, the, the other guy, who's also my friend, mm. um, he got himself a hernia. Oof. So we were like, okay, there's no way we can shoot <laughs> around a hernia when we've got a big fight scene in there as well. Yeah, I guess so. Um, Action and hernia doesn't. So the whole thing got, got shelved. Yeah. Um, it's still, you know, pretty much ready to go on the back burner. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the actor hasn't fully recovered from his hernia yet mm-hmm. still. Um, so it would either be a conversation about whether we do it with a different actor mm-hmm. or, or whether we just wait for him. So yeah. we are still talking to each other, but I think that because now things are, are busy again, it's mm-hmm. not going to be in the near future. And they've got other projects that they're mm. focusing on now as well. So, but yeah, but before you go into something bigger, you want to start with like, well, with a short film, yeah, as yeah. a director. But having done all of that prep, and I storyboarded the entire film, mm-hmm. I you know I'd had conversations with all the departments about colors and lighting and da da da. Um, so I kind of feel like I've I've done it. Mm-hmm. The actually being on set shooting it, I've kind of done before because I've, yeah, I've yeah, yeah, done. Yeah, yeah done that as a coordinator but it was that prep side and and just getting everything ready that I was missing more mm-hmm. um, so I'm more confident now than I was before that I can I, I at least understand that process mm-hmm. um, it would still be nice to to direct on set because although that is something I've done I've, I've not seen a narrative through from beginning to end yeah um, 
So we should expect some something directed by you. Hopefully, point, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully very soon. I mean, if we'd done the short, it would be done mm. by now. We'd, we'd be going to festivals. So, mm. yeah, we were all very, very disappointed, because especially because it was the strikes and there was nothing else to do. Yeah. So we were, it was nice to be doing something. But mm. um, yeah, hopefully that comes about. And if not, there'll be something else. We, we have, I, I met up with the producer friend the other day and we were saying, let's just do something smaller. And yeah. I, I don't actually have to do something with action in it. Like, in a way, I'd rather it didn't have action because mm. then I'm able to show that I can I can do other things. Yeah, yeah, direct, like actual drama. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we've got some ideas, but we'll see. It's, mm. uh, Who do you think are like the bigger, biggest names right now or like your inspirations in, in, in the industry, like it's especially people who do action? As coordinators? As, uh, Performers, performance? coordinators, directors who, you know, coordinates the stunts and all the stuff. I'm, I'm a big fan of the extraction films. Yeah. So I really like what they're doing with those. They're not one take full movies, but um, I know that uh, our director from One Shot Mm -hmm. was having conversations with Sam Hargrave before and after Extraction came out, then One Shot came out. Mm -hmm. So they'd spoken. And then Extraction 2 came out, and then we've just shot one more shot, mm -hmm. which was earlier this year. Um, sorry, earlier last year. Yeah, because it came out earlier this year. Uh, so they have some similarities. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're a much bigger budget than we are, but you can kind of see where, the, where they've spoken to each other and mm -hmm. they borrowed things. Um, so I'm looking forward to what they do with Extraction 3. Yeah. Um, and we hopefully will get a one shot three. Yeah. Uh, so we can we can steal from them again. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, we, that was a big reference for us yeah. uh, preparing for a one shot. Um, I think the John Wick film is always fun to watch and just just to see how far they go with things. Yeah. Some may say too far, but uh, it's it's nice to know how inventive they can be. Yeah. So obviously they're trying to top everything But that's the before. thing, yeah, because with, with every part, they have to go bigger and bigger and bigger. And for me personally, like, I love those films. I think they're like great, but you can take one action scene from, from, from any John Wick film, put it in separate film, it will be an action film with good action, mm -hmm. with just one scene. Yeah. <laughs> and there, like, I, I don't know, with John Wick, especially like with the last one, at some point I was like, there was like way too much. I couldn't even perceive the action anymore even that it like it's really cool it's amazing but i was like i can't i had enough <laughs> stop and especially in the last one i think it was the last one where, like with the with the stairs when he yeah. got upstairs and then he rolled down all the way down i was like oh come on not the whole way back again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand the dramatic effect, <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, oh, no, not. But it, yeah, I, I think it had some very, very nice scenes, like with the, with the top you with the shotgun. Yeah, like, that, that was really so cool. Good. Yeah. So good, yeah. And yeah. just to see the behind the scenes of how they did that and mm -hmm. like how they did the Paris stuff with all the cars and like mm -hmm. and, and the car hits and stuff. And then, yeah, just just how how the story how stunts are developing in terms of how you can use VFX, how mm. you can use wire work, how mm. you can, you know, develop burns and and car hits and stuff into other things and 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 even small ones like um like day shift mm. that Scott did with um JJ Perry that had some really cool stuff and that got a lot of Taurus um nominations. I can't remember if it won anything but it certainly got nominated. Um James Bond is always a good source of material. Mission Impossible is always a good source of material. Um, yeah, just seeing what, because you've got to keep up with what people are doing, because yeah. you can't just put something in that's outdated that doesn't quite work anymore. But also, you're also trying to think about something that hasn't been done before and or trying to take something that has been done and, and do it in a different way. So it's nice to to uh to keep an eye on those things um when are you watching those films can you just relax and watch a film I or you're always kind of analyzing like oh this is a cool thing i will i will, or like oh how do they do that <laughs> yeah sometimes sometimes like 
I struggle to actually analyze it. Sometimes I sit back and enjoy oh, it too much. So yeah, I'll, yeah. if I'm doing a film and I'll be like, oh, I'll watch this other film for mm. a reference and I'll be watching it. And then at the end of the movie, I'll go, oh, I totally forgot to think about <laughs> how they did everything. <laughs> and I was just enjoying it. Oh, I love this film. Um, so then I have to watch it again and yeah. watch it in slow-mo. Um, so yeah, it, I mean, it does take away a little bit, but mm. especially when, because now, like you know who the stunt performers are and you you watch a, a scene and you're like oh there's a stunt performer there playing that character and yeah. there's something's going to happen now so yeah. that, that spoils yeah, 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 yeah. you know something's going to kick off any minute mm. um but i can i can still sit back and enjoy, enjoy it yeah, yeah. Uh, but the are people like for, for from action do do like do communicate a lot uh for example if you've seen like some, some film like and like well i really want to know how they did it can you just you know message them and find out or yeah Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, I've done that before. There's mm-hmm. there's um a coordinator who made you might not know it, a French film called Athena. Mm-hmm. Um and they had a lot of one take um shots in and a lot of stuff with vehicles, a lot of stuff with pyros and, and fireworks. Uh and I got in touch with that coordinator mm-hmm. who I, I knew kind of beforehand, but there was no like there was no conflict of interest between us. So I could yeah. approach him and say, Oh, how did you do that? Um I'm I'm quite friends with uh Jude Poyer, who's who's quite up and coming, if if not already. Uh he was the first coordinator on Gangs of London. Mm-hmm. Um so he kind of developed that with, with yeah. Gareth. Uh he's just done Havoc, which is yet to be released, but looks really cool and, and I know they've they've gone a long way with action design on that one. Mm-hmm. Um and there are times when I'll I'll ask him for advice and things or, or just suggestions on performers sometimes if you need a specific look or a specific skill set yeah um, a lot of the coordinators will talk to each other say mm. who can do this uh were there any like projects in your experience when you had to work with some directors that really demanded way too much and didn't think about safety well you had to say no to them like well we're not doing this i don't think i've worked with anyone who was that strong on that mm. i think it, i mean sometimes you get naivety and they don't realize how unsafe it is and mm-hmm. sometimes you get a director who's just a little bit too much on what they want and not really thinking about what it costs mm-hmm. in terms of both health and and money um so you sometimes get asked for things that that aren't very safe mm-hmm. or aren't, aren't very um achievable but then usually after a conversation even if they have to begrudgingly back down yeah they yeah they it's very hard to argue something if someone's going to get hurt as yeah. a result of it um because <laughs> then you don't look very good <laughs> yeah because i mean argument. you know because i've i've heard about the projects most of them obviously were like you know so uh, low budget things that people were doing themselves when they thought like yeah we didn't need the the you know stunt coordinator there Even like with something very simple, you really should to kind of cons- like at least to to have someone to basically give you some consultation of like even how to fall. So, and I uh, think even like there have been productions where I've been brought in or, or or I've insisted on being there when it was just as simple as a trip and fall or someone getting slapped or something. Mm-hmm. And although they probably could have staged that without me in just a basic okay one actor stands here one stands here you do this that you don't hit each other i can usually whether it's talking to the actor or talking to the camera person i can usually make that look better mm-hmm. um you know maybe it's the reaction that doesn't work maybe it's the way the actor's moving or when the way the camera's ang- uh, the, the angle or, or how they're capturing it yeah just a small tweak here and there can usually up that yeah. effect a lot more mm-hmm. so if you get more bang for your buck by having a coordinator there mm-hmm. all right uh, what was the most challenging stunt that you, or, or action scene that you worked on one shot would certainly be the mm. most challenging shoot yeah <laughs> particularly one more shot which we shot in stansted airport mm. on four weeks of night shoots having to work around all the airport security every day um how did you I, i didn't know that they actually allowed to do it like in 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 working airports yeah yeah it's quite yeah. a few films that do work in mm. airports uh we the reason we did night shoots was because we could go in when the airport was was quiet mm-hmm. um so i think most flights kind of finish around 10 30 
and then they don't start again till like seven. Mm. So we had that window. Obviously, there's public around overlapping those periods a little bit, but we had about from from eleven o'clock till five o'clock, where where it was quiet. Mm. So that was our shooting times, and then we had the peer, the area either side of that to get people in because you still need to go through security even though you're working there. Mm-hmm. So we had to have a crew of I don't know how many a hundred people going through security, which could take two hours for the entire production. Yeah. And then we've got armory, we've got special effects, we've got who makeup and costume, who everything had to come out every day and then go back in every day. We couldn't And you leave. couldn't just leave it there. No, because because the That's sets we were working yeah in this in the areas i think there was one area where um there was a a cordoned off bit that that was out of sight that we could leave stuff mm-hmm. uh but that we didn't have that all the time and there was one bit where there was one scene where it wasn't in a public area mm-hmm. so we had a, a lot more access to mm-hmm. that but everything else we were using public areas yeah. um so that was challenging yes. and and all of the stunts and everything had to be um prepared and created in the, uh, like we we had limited times where we could get airside to actually look at it and to plan it and mm. we wouldn't always have the right actors or the right team to to completely do it so sometimes we were doing it um although we had seen it and planned it we didn't have all the people mm. who'd seen it and planned it mm. until the day um there were other scenes we did a lot of vehicle stuff in that lots of driving around mm. uh we had a section where we were passing a camera that started inside one vehicle and then they passed it through the window to a camera vehicle which then overtook and and moved oh, around the, the vehicle those, those are the, the nicest shots of that but it's so hard to do yeah. yeah and we had we had difficulties with the lock off because the crew who were positioned or not our crew but the airport staff who were positioned along this road to stop people stepping into the road or driving into the road mm. for obvious reasons because the camera there's one point where the camera is being held by the camera vehicle but still attached to the the uh, hero vehicle mm. so had either one of them needed to stop it would have been very difficult because they were yeah. attached to each other um how how do you design action like that do you like because you Do you know all the available equipment and like that you can use for for shots like that? Because they do, or do you need to consult with the um, DOP or actual cameraman? Like how like well, what kind of camera they're using, <laughs> the size of a camera, how you pass it, how like how do you design, design things like that? So that was that was a lot between me and the DOP. So mm-hmm. he um, and he, he Job um, Ren, Renique, I think is how you pronounce his name. Um, he uh would would plan out the idea in terms of how the cameras would get transition and, and the grip um mm. would work out you know how to make that safe and they and they had the camera vehicle and the equipment and the cameras were all decided in advance mm-hmm. and then we took uh that setup to brands hatch um and we actually rehearsed on their on their track mm-hmm. we rehearsed the the movement of the vehicle and how what we had to do to do the handover and how the the speeds and stopping points and distances and everything mm-hmm. else so so that was all planned out but when we took it to the airport as i was saying that we couldn't have anyone step out or drive out on that street but the airport staff weren't particularly good at stopping people mm-hmm. although they said they were mm-hmm. um when they had an angry a uh, pilot who just finished his shift at mm-hmm. 11 o'clock at night who wanted to go go home mm-hmm. they weren't stopping them so when we realized that was happening we were like okay well we we can't do this mm-hmm. move um so we came back again another day where we had a professional um lock off company like a professional mm-hmm. vehicles company and road management sorry uh and they were a lot better mm-hmm. um That just meant we had to cut down a lot of the we had to make it safer. So we we didn't do the transition that day, but we did we did some other driving, but we had to go very very slowly. Mm. We had to have like lock offs all the way down the road and mm. lots of radio communication on when things were safe and as soon as if anyone even came near us, 
we were like, stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also, even if we got someone in the background, because yeah. this was meant to be a, an abandoned airport with nobody was there, and occasionally you'd get this or like a vehicle with an orange light mm -hmm. go, <laughs> going past in the background. <laughs> Oh, it sounds yeah. like hell to It was a very it. challenging yeah. shoot, yeah. And and we lost so much time because of just the airport complications. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not not because they were difficult in any way, but just, you know, it took so long to get things through. And some if we had a delay with anyone or if anyone forgot their passport mm. or, you know, turned up without their pass or the, the passes had been done incorrectly or mm -hmm. something, or we had we had a scene where we had to push a scene to another day but then people didn't have the right passes because they had the passes for the the first day and not the second day mm. um so that cost time and was challenging and then because you have less time on the day you're then having to cut things and then that creates more issues and you're having yeah, to make yeah. things up on the day and you know nobody wants to make something up on the day because mm. that takes more time but are you, are you happy with the final product yeah i think it came out surprisingly well mm. um there's there's a lot in it i wish we could have done differently i wish mm. we had that time to to go okay this is how we would do it under these circumstances but the circumstances were coming up on the day so mm. we weren't able to to have that prior knowledge nice well you know you learn the mistakes or or sometimes you just understand that there, there was nothing you could do <laughs> yeah that, that was mostly the case yeah all right um so how how dangerous is this job that you do? I mean, it can be very dangerous. Yeah. Um, the I'm I'm pleased that I'm not I'm often dealing with fights or, or kind of low danger things mm -hmm. where obviously someone can worst case someone can get knocked out or break an arm or something. But mm -hmm. you know, if you get hit in the face by accident. Mm -hmm. Although God forbid it doesn't happen, yeah. it's it's a minor yeah, injury. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's cases of stunt people getting killed on yeah. sets almost every year, mm. um, which is tragic and and most of the time shouldn't happen. It's, yeah, um, it's fortunate that usually with the bigger stunts, the safety and the and the attention to detail is is yeah. much greater. Yeah, that you actually get more accidents on the smaller things where mm -hmm. it's a you can be a bit more complacent or um, or there are just other factors that you can't control. Like with a fight, there's so many things that you just can't control. Yeah. Um, whereas with, if you're falling off a building, there's there's a lot more safety elements put in. Mm -hmm. And I think with VFX and, and wire work and things becoming technically more advanced, the safety element is, is better than it mm -hmm. has been in the past. Um, but it's always dangerous. That's that's why it stunts. Because it's worth it. Yeah. What what motivates you to do it? Yeah. Um, for me, it's it's how it's the feeling you get on the outside. It was always the feeling that the audience get, and I was I was always into adventure films and action films and 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 dramas, just like. I wouldn't say I'm an action junkie, but it's more like war films and you know drama films where where something is is so visceral and moving and, and emotional, particularly about fights, and that's why I was drawn to fights more than anything else mm. because they change people and violence is 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 every day in our lives and we mm -hmm. all see it and we all ref have a feeling about it and we're all affected by it whether that's simply fear or you know you might avoid going down a certain street because you're afraid of the violence or you might you know certain towns and, and mm. cities at night can be quite scary when you're when it's two o'clock in the morning and people are coming out drunk and everything yeah um so i think it's something everyone can relate to and you know a lot of people were bullied at school or, or have, have been in fights in some form or other mm. um and yeah, it's it's that response to violence. It's that human emotion that, mm. that I get the best, most out of. So I'd rather do fights than setting someone on fire and falling off buildings. Because mm. although although that hurts and that you know that, that, that there, there is a sense of danger and, and suspense, it's it doesn't quite get the same emotional mm -hmm. response. Less dramatic. 
Well, yeah. Modestly, it, yeah. 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 In a funny kind of way. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I understand what you mean. Uh, is there, <laughs> because as I understand, uh, there's probably more men in, in stunts. Is there like a shortage of uh, female performers, stunt performers? Uh, there is in general, but it's, it's getting a lot better now. Yeah. And I think particularly, and I think the industry is changing for the better as well. Things mm -hmm. like, you know, productions like Wonder Woman, um, uh, Hannah, um, even things like Star Wars and, you know, those, those big uh, Marvel films and everything are, are introducing a lot more female characters mm -hmm. now and, or female leads. And then there's the opportunity for females to double them. Yeah. So there's more stunt women training because there's more work available. So you kind of got to start from from the bottom to, to of course. or the top to work backwards. Um, but there are more stunt people coming in and there's more acceptance that women can do it. Whereas once it was like, oh, mm -hmm. the women can't do this. Mm -hmm. now I think, I mean, not in my generation, fortunately. Yeah, but, yeah of course. Um, yeah. Cool. So right. yeah, it's it's definitely getting better. Uh, look, well, what's uh, what's next for you right now? What's next? So, I did a few films earlier this year. Uh, there was uh, a film called Jingle Bell Heist, which was a, a Christmas heist movie. Mm. Um, that should be out for next Christmas. Um, we did a, an action film called Stand Your Ground, which should be out again similar time next mm. year. Um, and a film called Odyssey, which is not the Greek myth, but um, more of a modern day, dark comedy, chiller. Mm. I'm not sure what it is, but it's, it's quite dark, <laughs> very dark at the end. Um, mm. And that, that should be this time next year. And then coming up next, uh, there's a possible action mil movie, action martial arts film. Um, which would start shooting in about a month from now. Mm. Uh, we're, we're just having a lot of talks at the moment. Um, got to have a talk this afternoon with the producer. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going ahead, but mm. it's not like 100% yet. Mm. Uh, but that should be fun. There'll be lots to do on that. Uh, then after that, there's... I, just heard about a film that was cancelled last year because of the strikes, mm -hmm. but that should be coming back in July, um, which is a kind of a post-apocalyptic film in a bunker. Mm. It should be should be quite fun. Mm. Um, and what was the other one? Uh, there was a film, another one that was delayed from the strikes last year. That's kind of a, an action sci-fi, um, which may or may not happen in the next few no, months. So you, you have so quite a few options, options in, in, yeah. in, in the pipeline. Yeah. I don't know good. if you'll be able to do them all yeah, at the yeah. same time. But, but I mean, look, still, it's good to have some, <laughs> some kind of options because some of us are just struggling to find anything. What would be your dream project? I think potentially a war film. Mm -hmm. I would love to do a war film just because it has so many different aspects of stunts. If you think of like the top war films like Saving Private Ryan or, or Band of Brothers and things like that, it's not just fights. You've got you've got explosions, you've got gunfire, you've got vehicles, you've got all sorts of different elements of stunts, but they're all very story driven, very character driven, very much very visceral and and have a have a human connection whether even if you've not ever been in a war zone there have been there's so much coverage of war zones and so many war movies out there that mm. i think people have have much more connection with people in war yeah um you know most people will know a soldier or will, or maybe know civilians that have been through an experience mm. of war um that we have that greater connection it's not like a marvel movie or a star wars movie where you you haven't you don't have any concept it's it's entertaining and and you can you can still relate to the characters mm. but the the situation is is beyond our our knowledge yeah um whereas i think a war film just ticks all those boxes um mm. so that would be one and i think on another level from from more just from a fun aspect um 
something like a like a zombie movie or a mm. vampire movie <laughs> just yeah. just be able to <laughs> just have fun and do anything do like you can push the boat out a little bit yeah. in terms of having fun with it nice sounds like fun well yeah. i hope you'll get to it i hope you you you'll do it maybe there will be a small role for you know a russian guy <laughs> anyways look blitz round very quick questions quick answers no points no right or wrong answers and also no price <laughs> ready yeah all right uh texting or talking talking cats or dogs dogs do you have any nicknames no okay action dan action dan all yeah. right uh is there a dish that you cook for dish that you cook best sausage and mash with with onions and gravy nice <laughs> nice uh your favorite character in any video game book uh film utrid bebenberg from the last kingdom nice i love that but the book more than the oh there is a book TV. yeah it was i had no movie. idea there was a book actually bernard cormor <laughs> mm -hmm. nice yeah did you enjoy the series yes uh did yeah. you enjoy the final the, like the, the feature the film i haven't watched the feature yet all right but i saw all the all the series yeah. nice but yeah. i read all the books and the books are yeah obviously usually better but bernard cornwell is a great writer mm. yeah nice all right uh star wars or the lord of the rings lord of the rings it's very close though yeah very close apart from your job are there any unexpected talents you have i used to sing and dance oh well but, uh, there's not my job anymore but yeah yeah nice i wasn't amazing <laughs> but still because i can't do either of those things in any kind of acceptable level <laughs> i'm very bad at dancing or singing alien or aliens oh uh alien okay how often do you cry never never <laughs> i struggle to cry <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> sometimes i mean i easily cry when i watch some films or you know but just actually for, yeah I for do, myself no i do cry at films quite a lot yeah yeah same here uh and the final question uh well almost final uh how can people reach you if they want to work with you uh i mean for work you can email fights at danstyles.co.uk mm -hmm. f-i-g-h-t-s yeah danstyles.co.uk um but i'm also on instagram all right and the final thing i asked you a couple of days ago uh to prepare one cool thing something that you enjoy that you think our viewers should try to i i just did a a course with a, a stunt coordinator and rigger called keir beck mm -hmm. who kind of first came to fame through the mad max um remake the fury road mm -hmm. um and he was the rigger on that and it was a one week stunt rigging course um that some of the things that he was telling us about that he's done mm -hmm. were just like mind blowing mm -hmm. and and just the the concepts that he is applying to his his rigs to to bend physics mm -hmm. um was like genius mm -hmm. and and I'm a layman saying that so but um yeah it was it was very eye-opening is this course available to 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 public i guess yeah anyone yeah. can do it he he does one in berlin one in los angeles and one in australia um and maybe other places by request i guess mm -hmm. um but it's he usually does it every year uh yeah. and anyone can do it i mean obviously if you're into rigging and stunts it's i would highly recommend it yeah um but yeah it was it was it was great and we got to we got to build the rigs we got to play and perform and stuff and mm. and yeah it was it was good fun so you you learned a lot like are you is there anything that you already know that you will use on some of your projects future projects that you learned from that uh well i because we um our independent drama run a wire work course mm -hmm. but it's it's mainly a performance wire work course so we've we've got a lot of movement experts and aerial experts that are our instructors and and stunt coordinators and we're helping people move in the wires and although i understand how the rigs are set up and what they do um now from Keir's course i understand that to a greater level so i'm mm -hmm. hoping that the next course in july um i can apply a little bit more like maybe we can push things a little bit further or 
have some inspiration for some other things we can do. Um, but also we might, uh, I might uh, extend that course to, to have more of a rigging aspect mm. to it so we can teach rigging as well. Nice. Um, so yes, I would definitely take that on. Nice. And, and I often get wire work coming up in, mm. in my work, so All right. it just helps. So if you're interested in action, if you're based in London, if you're interested in action, firearms, uh, swords, and all this other stuff, and rigging, uh, try independent drama. Uh, and look, it was very lovely to talk to you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Uh, we will have to edit a lot around the you know, workers outside that were cutting the grass and blowing the leaves and whatever. <laughs> uh, it was great. Hope uh, maybe we'll do it again. Maybe after some big project, next project that you do, maybe we'll do some episode just about, you know, that particular project. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Bye Thanks guys. Good luck. <laughs>